Welcome back. New rules from the IRS. It is raising the amount that Americans can actually put into their 401ks. That begins next year. Workers can contribute up to $22,500 to their retirement plans. The 9.8% increase, the biggest jump. It's basically allowing you to save less. Joining me right now is Americans for Tax Reform President Grover Norquist. Grover, thanks very much for being here. Uh, what's your reaction to this 401k news during a time when inflation is rising and there's so much financial stress out there? Well, the government has indexed some of the tax code to inflation going back to when President Reagan passed the bill in 1981 where most of the brackets uh, were indexed. But there are a number of things that are not uh, indexed to inflation. Specifically, uh, capital gains taxes are not indexed to inflation. You and I and everybody, the 58 percent of people who own shares of stock in a 401k and an IRA, all of these those things hit. You pay your taxes not just on the real in, uh, increase, but on the increase in inflation as well. For a lot of people, even before all this massive Biden inflation, 40 percent of what they paid capital gains taxes on were actually inflation gains, not real gains. That's an increase in the real capital gains tax. We need to get rid of that. There is legislation. And the good news is, is it has passed the House twice, the House once and the Senate twice over the last years. And Democrats like Schumer and Pelosi have both endorsed it. This may be something we can agree on after the election. And the Democrats are going to be looking to be able to say they did something about growth and inflation. Well, Grover, I guess the president has been pushing this idea that he wants to hire 87,000 new IRS agents. He wants $80 billion earmarked for the IRS so that he can expand it. Of course, there's no money for the border, the wide open border or any other border agents. But he's got all this money going to the IRS and he wants to raise taxes next year as part of his overall spending package, which was passed into law. Do you think the Republicans will be able to stop any of that should they take the majority in 11 days? Absolutely. And here's the good news. We've done this twice before. Uh, Bill Clinton came in. Uh, with a majority of the House and Senate, taxed too much, spent too much, lost the House and Senate. And Republicans came in, they took much of his spending off the table, they made him cut the capital gains tax, and they made him reform welfare, block granted out to the states. All things he didn't want to do, massive spending restraint from where he was going to be. We got into a surplus. Then we had the same thing happen with Obama. Obama got a Republic Democrat House, Senate, and President, spent too much, taxed too much. Obamacare, lost the House, lost most of the Senate. Uh, and what did we do? When he wanted the debt ceiling increase of $2 trillion, Republicans said, sure, you just need to reduce spending over the next decade from what you were planning to spend by $2 trillion. That was the sequester. It was a massive spending reduction from what he wanted to do. Uh, and Republicans just held the line and said, we're not giving you lots of money to spend We'll give you the debt ceiling, but only in return for real spending uh, reductions from what he had hoped to do. Uh, so I think you're looking at something. Uh, oh, he, uh, Obama, uh, continued the Republican tax cuts, the Bush tax cuts for two years, permanent, yeah. uh, 100 percent and permanently for 85 percent. We're looking at something very much like that, that the Republican House and or Republican Senate can do this. Biden's in a much worse position than either of those other two gentlemen were. So I'm wondering if the markets rally big time on a, a GOP win, because maybe it means that divided government uh, will result in Biden's agenda not getting done. Grover, this president is under fire once again for all of this misinformation that he spews out every day. Yesterday, he took a premature victory lap on the deficit. Watch this. My administration announced that this year, the deficit fell by $1.4 trillion, the largest one-year drop in American history. The Republican plan would add about $3 trillion to the deficit. $3 trillion. That's their plan. Um, Grover, you know these numbers better than anybody. The Committee for a Responsible yeah. Federal Budget revealed that all of the decline in the deficit that the president is talking about is due to the fact that the emergency COVID spending has lapsed. So it's all about the fact that the COVID spending is no more. 
And that is why you're not seeing uh, an impact for, to the deficit. And yet he's acting as if yeah. something he's done has actually lowered okay. the deficit. It's just not true. Uh, let's be gentle. If you had raised inflation the way he did, if you'd shot up spending the way he did, if you had nothing to show for it, if you'd shut down energy production and it made Europe less safe and Ukraine threatened and all of these things, were, what would you want to talk about? You would just grab any single piece of, of data, however out of context as that one is. I mean, he spent so much that he... He told us it was going to be a temporary spending. So then when the temporary spending ended, he announced he'd cut spending. No, he didn't. Spending's much higher than it was before he came into office. So, but be gentle. I mean, he has nothing to talk about that's pleasant. He's, and he's got several, two, almost two weeks before the election. He's going to have to keep saying things. Um, and it's just not going to be any fun to be him. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's one analysis. Grover, it's good to see you as always. Thanks very much.